Hey everybody, it's Duffy. Thanks for spending some time in Bike Week Nation with me. Um, back for an 11th season of Bike Week Nation. This year we're going to mix it up a little bit. We're still going to do updates and on the rally and you know check in with people as we get closer to the rally, which is just under three months away. But I kind of wanted to go back to my roots and do some long-form um, video um, and focus on the people who work behind the scenes and in front of the scenes at the rally. Um, you know, the bar backs, um, the security people, the people who take care of parking, um, the, the rally girls, the servers who we all sort of know and see, um, that masters of ceremony like Jack Shit, who we're going to focus on tonight. I've known Jack for, God, 15 years now. And uh, when Jack used to host uh, the wet t-shirt contest at the Roadhouse, um, I'd ride at, you know, all day during the rally and I'd, I'd pull into the, the roadhouse and there'd be like 15,000 people there for the wet t-shirt contest every afternoon and Jack Shit was the ringleader. He, you know, he, he was a master of ceremony that really knew how to work the crowd and he knew how to have a really, really fun wet t-shirt contest, but he did it in a way that wasn't really degrading to the participants. He kind of, he kind of empowered the participants and uh, got the crowd into it and it was, he was sort of a legendary event. But when the um, roadhouse closed, um, it, we thought that was kind of the end of the trail for Jack and his wet t-shirt contest. But um, Jack actually started out working at the chop shop um, prior to working at the roadhouse. And when the chop shop came back for the 100th anniversary of the Laconia Motorcycle Rally, they brought Jack back with them. So uh, let's take a look at uh, Jack at the 100th anniversary. I gotta tell you, Duff, it's uh, it's been pretty magical, you know, between, well, for me, when the Roadhouse sold the property, you know, I thought there'd never be a chance coming back. I really thought it was over, you know? And uh, Billy had reached out, he says, we're, we're doing this bigger than we've ever done it. You gotta come back. I said, this is goat show now, baby. This is goat show. I, you know, I can't come back. And he said, no, man, this is the 100th anniversary, biggest rally in the world, oldest rally in the world. We're gonna go big like nobody's ever seen. I said, if it's okay with GOAT, then I'm coming. But I got to tell you, when you talk about the relationships that you build here, it, I'm almost ready to cry. It's been overwhelming, the response of the people that have come up to me that thought I'd never be back or that I've been here 14 years with me between the broken spoke, the, you know, the lost about, the chop shop, the roadhouse, the smoke and tire saloon. It's been incredible. And the relationships, you know, we're one big carny family. So while we might have three members in that family here, we might have four members at, at High Octane, might have five people that we know in our family working up at Anthony's place, you know? Um, everybody that does this is here. Everybody's in town. But the, the reaction from the guests, the people that have come, has just been incredible. I mean, the perfect example of what this is all about is 17 years ago, I stopped to help somebody fix a flat tire. And for the 16 years that followed that, they've been at my Thanksgiving table every year since. That's what the motorcycle does. It brings people together like nothing else on planet Earth. You know, you can pull up in front of a bar, have 20 motorcycles out there, and 19 out of 20 people will say, whoa, don't turn in there. And then you go in there and you leave with friends for life. All it takes is the motorcycle. The best people in my life have become because of the motorcycle. My career, because of the motorcycle, the magazine, the TV shows, the movies. Why? Because of the motorcycle. Show me a piece of farm equipment that brought the world together. Corvettes, Jeeps, you know, you got a certain little group, but there's nothing in the world like the experience of flying down the road on two wheels. And that's why most pilots ride, because it's the closest feeling to flying. And uh, I'm blessed. We're blessed to do what we do. It's a gift. Well, it's perfect example right now is when we're talking about the relationships over the years that you form. 
I just had six friends ride in from all the way from Washington Township, Pennsylvania, jammed all the way to get here. First thing they did, they stopped to come and hug me. The, the response from the people have been incredible. Because it's the hundredth, people who said they'd never come back are all back. You know, they'll be here again. They're all gonna come back. You know, we have to keep this thing alive because this might be the only place I get to ever see these people. They don't get the Sturgis, they don't get the Daytona. Every regional rally is so special and different unto itself. And Laconia is Laconia. Four seasons every day, four seasons of weather every day. You have the most spectacular lake, the mountains, the roads are incredible. This is some of the best riding in the world. And that's no matter what, is gonna keep people coming back here. And I'm blessed that each one of those people inevitably becomes my friend, never. I have seen every race, every religion, every creed, every color, everything, because it's the motorcycle. And the funny thing is, only in America are you a scumbag for riding a motorcycle. The rest of the planet is just a way of life. It's a convenient way to get through traffic in terrible big cities. Like even, even in Europe, like the, you know, the clubs, the, the small ones, the giant ones, they get grants from the government to open the clubhouse, to continue the sport of motorcycling. I mean, can you imagine the government here giving the club money to open up a clubhouse? No, take a little more, make it nicer, because the sport is so incredible. Like I think Jay, I don't know if you talked to Jay, I think he's over at the Isle of Man right now. That's bucket list, right? Why? This is a land speed record holder on a Harley FXR who's in Ireland right now watching a bunch of crotch rockets go crazy and he's having the time of his life. It's universal. Back in the day, sure, back in the day, the 70s, you rolled in on a Honda, somebody might have kicked it over. Now, who gives a shit? And now everybody's making Honda choppers, KZ1000 choppers. You know, if you build it, they'll come. We built it here and everybody showed up and now you build a killer motorcycle and you'll just see the crowd form around it. There's something so incredible about the V-twin engine. It's changed the world. The French, the French say the only two things America ever gave the world were Harley Davidson and rock and roll. And I can fucking live with that. A carpenter. Everybody reaps the rewards of this. That is a fact. You know, when you have people that don't understand what we do, what this is about, how truly important this is to the people, the residents, the businesses, everybody wins. It doesn't matter if you're in the propane business. It doesn't matter if you have a little deli, an ice cream shop. I mean, hell, Goat's computer blew up the other day. We ran down the road, local computer shop, fixed it, and we're in business. Everybody benefits. You're talking about tens to hundreds of millions of dollars that would not be in this local economy had they done away with this. And sadly, for many years, they've tried to do away with this. And it's just heartbreaking. What would this community have? Granted, this is a, probably with the ski in and probably a more or less a year round community. But most places that motorcycle rallies aren't. And you take that from them, shut down, out of business. Look what COVID did. Look what COVID did. We lost, I lost half of my season. Events that I've been doing 10, 12, 15 years no longer exist. The economic pain, the vendors, they, they happened at the beginning of the year. So they stocked up on merch for the year and then were shut down. And so many of them I've not seen. We talked about the relationships. It's the same vendors. It's the same bartenders. It's the same barbacks. Come on, Bill. And um, we all one big family. And to walk up to the vendors and not see those same faces, it tears your heart out, you know? Especially for like the Chop Shop Pub. His relationship is so incredible with everybody that people are fighting to come onto the property, but we don't have it. We don't have big sponsors. We won't have big sponsors because we keep it honest. We do it by bikers, for bikers, and that's it. The real deal. This is the real deal. This year, I'm gonna do things called Staff and Vendor Spotlight, where I sort of take a look at, you know, maybe not a full film like we just saw about with three, sorry, take two, three, two, one. This year, I'm also going to do a segment called Staff Server Spotlight. And it's going to be shorter segments, not an entire film like we just saw about Jack. By the way, we're going to see other films about 
the person who owns the Tower Hill Tavern. We're going to see um, a couple of films about the family that owns the High Octane Saloon. We're going to see a film about Sloan and a whole bunch of other people who work in Laconia. So this is going to be an ongoing theme this year. So stay tuned. We're going to focus on a different person who works at the rally um, with a short film every week. But we're also going to try and do a shorter segment, you know, um, just a quick look at the people who work um, at the rally. And since we focus on Jack, who worked um, at the um, chop shop, I figured we'd do a server spotlight um, for two of the folks who work at the chop shop. I tried to get an interview with Billy, who owns the chop shop, but he was just too busy. Um, but I did get the chance to talk briefly with his daughter and also um, Santa, uh, who's just kind of also a legendary figure at the chop shop. getting everything ready to go. It takes us about maybe two to three weeks. So we have a lot of returning faces throughout the years. Uh, being one of the vendors here at Bike Week, uh, we meet a lot of other vendors and we've kind of built a relationship with them over the years. We got One Eyed Jacks over at the Drive-In, we got Tower Hill, we have High Octane, which used to be the Buffalo of Smudge. So we've created a good relationship with everybody and we wish everybody the best. We just want to see everybody profit and have a great time and meet a lot of people and just build relationships and hopefully those relationships can create bigger things in the future for everybody. Um, we all have a lot of fun being here and it's a lot of work. We work really hard, long hours, but it's all worth it. Um, all the people that we meet and just getting up and dancing on the tables and singing with the bands and um, yelling at people with microphones and just squirting shots into their mouth with penis and um, yeah, it's a great time. We're super happy to be here. So tell me a little bit, how long have you been going to Bike Week? What this, what's this all about? Well, I've been doing Bike Week since 2014 at the Chop Shop. Which started, I started out over at the uh, Drive-In Theater and uh, graduated over in here. Been with, with the Chop Shop for many years. And what's it all about to me? It's all about friendship. I see all kinds of people that, that I see, you know, a couple times a year and uh, I make more friends who become family and that's that's a big thing to me and uh, you know you just you just can't beat these people you know if you're heck if I was broke down on the side of the road somebody would help me out and uh, I, I think that's wicked cool and then I, like I said I need all kinds of wicked cool people it's like a big family right? it is it, and, it, and I and I think that this is all about family and yeah and they know Santa you know you have people who come all the way up here and go 
wow, it came all the way up here from, I don't know, Kansas, just to see Santa, you know? But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's wicked cool. So like, are there any secret initiations for the sons of St. Nicholas? Well, you kind of got to have that beard, you know? And, uh, but no, no, no sick secret. Just, just love, love people, you know, make everybody happy and, and believe in the spirit of St. Nicholas. So. And you do Santa Claus in, the, in off season, right? Isn't that your? Yeah, but I don't do Santa. No? No, I am Santa, you know, I, um, I do it year round. You know, I, I go into places and. Most people can walk into a business and, or a restaurant and uh, they're out the door in three minutes. Me, 45 minutes later, I'm still trying to make the door because I'm busy saying something to everyone. And, you know, God forbid I leave and I don't say hi to someone or a child or whatever. You know, I once had a, had a child who, parents always say, well, who is he? Who is he? Well, I said to the, a little guy, I said, I'm the Easter Bunny. And he looks at me and he says, no. I said, sure, I, said, I have whiskers. He goes, no, you can't be the Easter Bunny. And I said, why? He goes, you talk too much. So it's pretty cool. And, uh, but this is all one big happy family. And, and I'm, I'm so blessed to be here and to meet everyone. I think it's awesome. Well, we're blessed to know you, Sparky. You're the man. Duffy, it's, it's, it's a blessing to meet you guys. All right. Thanks for doing it. Nice to meet you. And the guy who could be sent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>